I'm going to show you how to build a simple mobile app using Flutter. It's very simple. I'm going to show you how to install it and develop a simple iOS app and an Android app with one single code base. This is going to be pretty cool. I'm also going to show you the fast development cycle that Flutter promises. To get started with Flutter, just go to flutter.io. On flutter.io, you can install the SDK. It's very simple. You just install the Flutter SDK through here. Choose your operating system. Here's Mac OS. And there's a few uh, examples here. You can either get clone or you can use brew and you get it all installed. Once it's installed, the editor that I like to use is IntelliJ. So I'm going to open up IntelliJ here. My Flutter is already installed. That's great. So IntelliJ is going to open up. It'll take a second or two. Great. You can also use Sublime. You can use Atom. You can use any editor of your choice. The SDK is open source. It's free. You don't have to pay for anything. IntelliJ is the only thing you have to pay for if you want to use IntelliJ. Other than that, everything is free. So I'm going to go ahead. This is a sample project. I'm going to get back to it. I'm going to click Create New Project. Choose Flutter on the side here. It automatically points to where my SDK is. I'm going to type in Flutter Sample App. I'll click Finish. It's going to go ahead and create the Flutter app. What it's doing is it's creating the Dart app. That Dart is the language that you write Flutter in. Dart is a very simple, very easy language to learn. If you've ever done JavaScript, if you've ever done Java, if you've ever done Python, Dart is going to be you know, the simplest thing to learn. It's also going to create an iOS and Android project. Really, you never have to touch these projects ever. It's all handled for you, unless you're doing some native development plugin, which we can get into later. So here's my app. It's open. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run this in the iOS simulator. You can optionally run this on an iOS device. You can run this on an Android device or even an Android simulator. I'm going to click Run here. It's going to go ahead. It's going to do some compilation for the first time. OK, so my app is loaded here. And you'll see that it's an iOS app, right? It's, it uses Material Design, which is great. Click on it, does the stuff. Now here's what's interesting. What if your designer comes up and says, hey, I don't like the blue app. I want a red app. So I can go here and I can change the primary theme to red. I'm going to save this. I'm going to open up, go back to the scene. I'm going to just resize my screens here just so you can see it in action. Now, on a typical app development cycle, you would have to hit build, it would rebuild the app. On Flutter, you don't have to do that. I'm going to click this lightning bolt icon here, and instantly it has changed to red. Now your designer says, no, no, our app isn't called Flutter Demo Homepage. It's actually called My Awesome App. I'm going to hit Run. And you'll see that instantly it's changed to My Awesome App. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but you see how it says you push the button? It's still 22. It's kept the state of your app, so you can just make changes and continue developing. If you click here, it will function exactly the same way. I can go down here and I can say this is how many times you have clicked on this app. Save. Lightning bolt. Boom. Right? I can even go ahead and start theming this. That 22, I'm going to remove the theme, whatever style that was. It's probably going to become tiny. 27. I can even go ahead and move this counter variable. I'm going to move the counter variable right here. And it's going to do the same thing. If you notice, it's kept state. Right? This is one of the really nice things about Flutter. That it keeps state regardless of your development in your development cycle. You know what? Just for fun, I'm going to make this into delete. Right? Run it. And that app icon has now become a delete icon. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I would love to be able to use the 
YouTube creator space to make my videos. However, my subscriber base is not large enough to meet their requirements. I live in a very, very small apartment. In order for me to set up everything, that takes a long time. And after filming, I have to take them down. So if I get about 10,000 subscribers, then I can use the YouTube space, which means I will be able to make more videos in a shorter time. And so please subscribe. It will help me so much. And see you next video. Bye for now.